So let's get back to what is the focus of today's meeting, what to optimize and how much to optimize. And I'm going to just jump into Ninja right away. So remember what we did last week, we ran a back test on about maybe four, four and a half years of data. We ended up with about, what was it, 9,000 trades. I'm just trying to do the same thing we did last time. Okay, so indexes, four indexes, was it? We had, it was a 15 minute chart. Here we go. And then it was uh, 2019, it was, I think, to today, right? Well, that was a week ago, but so it will not be the same exactly. Or there's a week difference in the time, in the covered time period. Okay, all signals. I don't want to auto reverse. I'm just going to go market order. We discussed that. No forced exit this time and no risk management this time that's how it was right and then we we um, tested for a one hour trade right so the target and the stop were both three eight yards away that's just a starting point it doesn't have to be three remember the Keltner channel from the midline it's 2.5 ATRs both ways so three ATRs if you enter at the midline which is the SMA 20 in that area then your target would be around or just a little bit outside the Keltner. Okay, nothing in the second. We're not going to trail anything now. We can do that later. That could actually be part of the optimization step. So I'm still back testing. No time filter. So later, some time filtering might be in order, but we'll skip that for now. What else is there? Okay, and chop filter, active, good. Number of signals, I remember we did five last time, which is all right. And then what else was there? Session close. Okay, so that's done too. So this is the back test. Let's run it. Let's see what we get. So performance, just to, just to recap quickly, anything bigger than one is a positive expectancy, which is good. 9,000 trades. Look at this. 9,500 trades. That's a lot of trades. So... It is a sample size that is meaningful for us. It's big enough for us to draw conclusions. Of course, these are statistics. We always have to remember, however good these results may be, but this is the past, and the past will never happen again exactly the same way. So the future will not be the same. But this is the best we can do. So NQ is pretty stellar. 1.2 is big. You're never going to get, if it's 1.5 or 2 point something or 3 point, then you did something wrong. There's no such edge in the market. So if it's too good to be true, then probably it's not true. All right, back to the point. These are pretty good and reasonable. Let me just see the equity curves, but I think it's pretty much the same as last week. Yeah, so it's all right. This is the ES. I remember this slump here, remember? NQ was pretty stable. But again, there's no guarantee it will be the same. Yeah, I remember this. So it's basically the same thing, except we added one more week since last week to the database. And this is the starting situation. We didn't really optimize anything yet. We just made some discretionary choices. And it's important to understand that every test, even though numbers are objective and numbers do not lie, Every test includes discretionary elements from the start. 24-7 is also an arbitrary choice and doesn't have to be that way. So you, you get the picture. So there are some arbitrary choices. Number of trades, five, definitely. I don't, it doesn't have to be five. The methodology itself is not arbitrary because what the software identifies is the reemergence of momentum. And I cannot change that. And I don't want to change that because that's what we do. Okay, so that's not an arbitrary choice. The methodology is rock solid. Certain settings like time frame, look back period, all these things could be arbitrary. Right, now that also means that as a first choice, playing around or optimizing for any input data which was an arbitrary choice is a good candidate to be optimized. And that's a good start. So I could optimize for minutes. I could optimize for number of trades, which I think we will actually do because I think that 
kind of makes sense, we could also optimize, obviously, for, for how far the profit and the stop should be or what's the best choice. Now, let's continue with optimization. And the first question I'd like to ask you, so what shall we, what would you optimize for? There's no guarantee 50 minute is the best, although my thinking was that I want, I don't want to be too on a very quick chart because I want to have a crowd. Usually moving to higher time frames improves results. That could have to do something with the, with the size of the crowd. So 50 minutes it is now. So let's run some optimization tests and let's see the whole thing in practice. What do you want to start with? Do you want to start with the minutes? Do you want to start with the target and stop optimization or perhaps the number of trades in a trend? Okay, so here's a trend. Right. By and large, what we try to do is that whatever time frame is our trading time frame, we want to look at that time frame and see where that time frame is going and then trade these legs which are in sync with the overall move of the market and we're not inch we are we are aware of the pullbacks but we're not shorting the pullbacks we're waiting for momentum to re-emerge target and stop let's start with that so i'm gonna leave the 50 minute where it is as it is and we're gonna ask the question we're gonna ask ninja trader a question this is how it works if this is your first time in the strategy and analyzer optimization function of Ninja and BTX, which is lightning fast, you will see four years of data. We're asking Ninja Trader a question between a minimum of, let's say, one ATR and a maximum of, let's say, maybe five ATRs. Okay, that's, that's the distance between the two edges of the Keltner. So five ATRs is a pretty large distance on whatever time frame you're on. Increments, this could be 0 0.5 if you want half an ATR increment. And notice that would give us 10 iterations, right? And then stop loss, same thing then, right? Because we want to keep the 1R ratio. We don't want to change that, I am assuming. Then that's one little detail about optimization. Don't optimize for too many things at the same time. Ninja allows you to change all these settings all over the place. You could end up with a thousand iterations. Ninja will work as hard as it can, but then what you're doing is you're curve fitting. Therefore, I maximum optimize for two things at one time. And those two things could be the stop and the target. So I'm okay with that. And I'm going to go with. 0 0.5 again. So what did I do here? Optimize target between five, one and five, half an increment. So that's already, that's already, I think, a hundred different iterations. And I'm going to leave the others alone. Okay. So I'm not going to touch the others. A hundred iterations is already enough work for Ninja. So if you're cool, then we're going to, I'm going to hit run and let's see what happens. Four years of data, four instruments and a hundred iterations that's probably 400 altogether for the four instruments let's see what happens 324 iterations all right well let's see okay we're about one third so maybe one more minute and then we should have the results i forgot to mention something as you can see we are and maybe i didn't make the right choice here we are testing for maximum profit we are testing for the 10 best results. Best two or three, perfectly fine for me. I don't need the best 10, but it's too late to stop now. I could abort, but I'm not going to. And the other one is maximum profit factor is not necessarily what we want to test for. As you know, Ninja offers some 30 or 50 different goals when it comes to optimization. And I think profit factor is okay. Sure, why not? but I would prefer sleeping better. So I would prefer instead of profit, I would go for a smoother equity curve, even at the expense of giving up a little profit. I don't want drama. I want stability. 
when you consider this, you may not want to choose profit factor. You may want to think about maybe choosing a smoother equity curve. I have the best 10 results up to here, you see? 56% profitable, remember by, by default it was 53. So we were able to improve results a little bit with optimizing for target and stop. 4.5 is what Ninja found the best target. Quite interesting, stop loss 4.5 over 9,000 trades, and not 9,000, but whatever NQ was doing, maybe 3,000 something, 4.5. That's interesting. That means that you enter the trade, well, 2.5 would be your Keltner, and you're way beyond your Keltner and the stop. Interesting. Give me a second here. So NQ, the best NQ result is 79% accuracy. You click on a certain line, let's say, let's say, let's choose the 79%. You click on that row, this area will change. So this will change and this will change, profit target. Okay, makes sense, right? So let's do it again. Let's do it again. I'm clicking on 79, 180R target. 4.5 ATR stop. If you, as I'm sure you have, traded for a while, maybe for years, you know that this is, cannot, this is not a surprise. This cannot surprise any of us here. For a higher accuracy, you want, you want a very close target and a very large stop. Make sense? If you enter the trade and you put the target right here, then you almost always, you will get hit. Your, your target will get hit, correct? Because your target is very close. You have a lot of very small wins and you get hit just by noise. That's true. But notice something, there's no free lunch. So your edge or is made up of two ingredients. One is the accuracy, the percentage of win loss. In this case, that will be very, very high, 79%, which will make you feel very good. But remember, your win loss ratio will probably be a very, very small number. When you lose, you will lose big. These two ingredients are tied together. And um, yes, it seems, this seems like, a, like very enticing, but I don't do this. I'm, I'm working with 1R. This is not a 1R trade, right? First of all, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose 10 again because that's just too many choices. I would choose three. That's more manageable for me. So I would choose three and I would choose something between 50 and 60 and that would probably give me a value which is closer to 1R. Make sense? I'm not telling you which one is the best. I'm just saying along what lines you should be thinking. So if you are pressing for this, then you will have very large losers. If you're okay with a more modest accuracy, then you have a, more losers, and more winners, and the two will be more equaled out. You can start to think for yourself about how you would like to trade, what kind of situation you would prefer for your trades over a large number of trades, whether you execute them totally algorithmically with BT or with a little bit of manual support with ProSTR. Either way, as a general rule, you should have some rules in your trading plan on where you want your target and stop when you enter the trade. For me, it's 1R. Another trader who would go for 53 is a more, just doesn't want the big drama anymore. And 3-3 three, three is just fine. It's a 1R trade. I have a little edge and I'm just uh, taking every trade as it comes along. And hopefully the equity curve would look something similar to what we see. 
and I don't want the profit factor. I'm going to choose another max strength. I think that's, that's, that's stability. Okay, I'm going to choose that. I'm just going to use the best two result. Best three, that's enough, a best three. Okay, let me hit run. And then in the meantime, we'll wrap up and then take it from here next time. So today, I hope we were able to look at a couple of obvious and very, very basic examples, of course, for optimization. And the whole point was optimization, the right amount of it is called learning that is necessary, overdoing it, or trying to, trying to use optimization to save pain in trading is not, in my opinion, the right path. There's no gain without pain. Remember that. So do not use optimization to try to make our life easier. Just use optimization to find the best values. That's all. Long story short, it's a worthwhile exercise if it's done in moderation. And once you're happy with the settings, then save the template of your settings. And from Monday to Friday, do not change. As you trade, when you wear the trader's hat, do not change the settings. On Saturday and, and Sunday, you're the researcher. You research, and if you want to modify the settings, you're free to do so, but do so not based on emotions, but based on data. And when Monday 9.30 comes, market opens, you are a trader. You're not a researcher. And the way not to doubt your settings is to run the numbers crunch the numbers, and I hope last week and today we crunched the little numbers and you can continue this testing. Okay, in the meantime, we have some results. So let's look at the NQ. So what did we test for? We tested for number of trades in a trend. Let's see what that number is. Maximum number of signals, two. Nice equity curve and two trades in a trend. And with this, I think it's time to stop. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm happy to see that our numbers are continuing to be valid and strong, whatever we do with the systems. We haven't really done these number crunching work before. It's just always just charts and, and um, it doesn't work that way. We have to work with the numbers. Thank you very much and have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Wednesday.